so we're making a part four of this fine video series that I think is just going to be going over some of the working out the bugs as they say trying to get this thing completed one of the big problems that we had right from the get-go was we were getting the wrench light on the dashboard and it would uh, give out the code of P0504 uh, I think it was and it's a uh, like a brake switch a B correlation and uh, that is a, a known wrench light thrower um, all we had done was put in the aftermarket brake light switch which only uses two wires instead of five wires like the factory brake light switch Let me see if I can get my fingers in here. So you got a heavy green and a heavy red. Those are the, the main brake light switch wires that actually trigger the brake lights at the back of the car. I don't know why, but there is a small green, there is a small red, and then there is a black. This is the factory brake light switch connector right here. Well, all we hooked up was the two heavy red and green wires, and we had brake lights, but we had a wrench light constantly. So after doing some poking around and talking to people and that were more knowledgeable on this system than I, we found out basically that the small green wire needs to be tied into the big green wire at the new brake light switch. Whatever circuit in the PCM, this is for, for the small green wire, it needs to know when the brakes are on. And so, after a couple of weeks of trying different things and then we finally learned that, we spliced in the little green wire into the big green wire and it seems that we have gotten rid of the wrench light after, I don't know, 100 miles of testing. But now, with that said, with that hooked up that way, now what we get is, and I've seen somebody else had this happen too, So now every single time that the car is on, when you hit the brakes, it triggers the solenoid in the steering column for the old column shifter. So you can hear that click every time you hit the brakes. So we're going to go inside the, uh, we're going to take the covers, we're going to take the steering column covers off and we're going to unhook that solenoid real quick. And that should get rid of that noise and not interfere with throwing any lights. So let's get the covers off of there and then we'll see what that looks like. So that uh, green connector almost in the center of the picture is the connector that we want to disconnect for the solenoid. So we'll get that undone and then make sure that noise is gone. No more clicky noise. So that should be handled. Then our uh, our next our next task after this is we're going to work on filling in the hole around the shifter coming up through the tunnel. So that'll be next. So 
we get the hole in the transmission open back up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a piece of uh, sheet metal that's about the same gauge as the tunnel. And I'm gonna make a plate, a cover that fills in most of the gap on the wide part. So we won't worry about this side of the transmission or the front edge, but we're gonna close in this side and this side and that'll just be held in with like three or four self tappers. Um, and we might put like a piece of camper tape, camper foam underneath of it to uh, seal it up even better. And then after we get that put in, we are going to seal the round the hole with the uh, gutter and flashing repair tape, which if, if you all don't know, this stuff makes excellent sound deadener if you want to put it all over your floors in your car. It's way, way cheaper than Dynamat. So we got a piece of uh, soda pop cardboard box that we're going to use to make a template and close this hole in. So this is our removable cover for closing in the uh, shifter hole in the tunnel. Obviously, I think it goes without saying that you need to have the hole in the tunnel large enough at the back edge so that when you're doing maintenance or taking the transmission in and out that there's enough room to slide the transmission uh, into the clutch. So we made this removable so that you can close in that hole, but if you need to service the transmission, you can unscrew that piece of tin and take the transmission out. So now we're going to seal in the hole. Uh-oh. After we unstick this from the careful. After we unstick this from the center console. I might have. Oopsie. What the hell was that? So we got our sound deadener pushed down. I think I think that turned out pretty good really close in that hole tight it's not going to hurt it if it touches the shifter it's soft enough and movable enough that the shifter eventually will just wear its way into the sound deadener how it sees fit now we're ready to put the carpet back and then see how our boot is going to work it's very difficult to find a boot that fits a shifter this big without going to like a semi-truck boot So after six months of driving around with the crappy rubber shift boot, we finally found us a place to make a custom one. We looked for, well, six months trying to find a off-the-shelf part that would work that wouldn't look terrible on this. It's difficult because it's really tall. And the floor is very, or the tunnel is very lumpy. So this is what we had made. It looks like it's huge right now, but I think once it's in place, once it's in place, I don't think it's gonna look that big no more. And they have you take like 12 different dimensions to get the shape of this thing. And even though it looks like it's symmetrical, that side is longer. You can see we have it marked. So thankfully the carpet is nice and dented from the boot that was on there. natural wrinkles in place. It's 
gonna have some wrinkles in it. That's totally normal, especially with the floor being as lumpy as it is. I think once this kind of breaks in a little bit, if we can get it to stay down. You, you want it up a little higher? Okay. I'm totally fine. All right, we're gonna get this ring situated on the leather and uh, maybe make an attempt at poking some holes and then we'll revisit what we got going on this is what we ended up with as kind of the finished product it bunched up a little bit in the back but there's not really a whole lot you can do about that do about that in an all custom application with a lumpy transmission tunnel but uh, we used contact cement to bond the steel ring trim ring to the boot which has really given it some much better shape and I think once this is screwed down and it gets a lot of its natural wrinkles to it that bit of bunching up in the back won't be too bad at all so we're gonna put this on and gonna use a straight pick to find all of our holes. There may or may not be some swearing involved. A little sneak peek. We're gonna get after it. Now she's done and installed car looks a hundred percent times more looks a hundred times better and more presentable I know she's just an old cop car but still got to take a little pride in your work even when it's maybe not the most valuable car on earth I don't think I mentioned when I first uh, showed this boot uh, this was made by a company back east, I believe. I think they're back east. It's called Redline Goods. And uh, they do a lot of custom interior stuff. But they're, from what I can tell, they're pretty well known for making a lot of one-off uh, shifter boots. That being said, I would have to guess that um, if you're doing a manual swap in your Crown Vic and you wanted to utilize the same boot, um, they would probably have a record of that and could just make another one pretty quick. Very happy with the way it turned out. No binding, of course, and it doesn't make any squeaky rubber noises like the um, crappy fake Hurst one that we had on there. So that's probably going to be the end of the video for how we sealed up the floor. If you have any questions on doing the Redline Goods shifter boot, by all means put them down in the comment section below. Always try and get to every one of them and uh, we'll see you on the next one.